regression, the result is exactly the same. Because the underlying statistical model is exactly the same, which gives us a lot of benefits. Right? And the benefit is that we can start playing around and that we can start converting data from one particular statistic to another one. Right? And if you have means and standard deviations, well, you can actually calculate a correlation based on that available information. You can convert a p-value into a correlation. Right? Those are more advanced uh, conversions, so we tr stay away from them. Right? We will explain you the basics, the most commonly used uh, conversions in, in this section. So, coming to our example, right? imagine that we have four studies examining the relationship between controllability and negative emotions. Right? In the papers that you coded, there were many more relationships that were tested. Right? But we're focusing on one for the reason of simplicity. And we only focus on four studies for the reason of simplicity. Right? And in reality, we have a bunch more. So imagine the first one has a sample size of uh, over 600, has a t-value. Uh, we have uh, reliabilities. The second study, smaller sample size, reports a correlation. Right? So this is uh, the first paper that you coded. Um, third study reports uh, only a regression coefficient, only reports a standardized beta, no correlation matrix. Right? If you ever report a regression, please list a correlation matrix. Right? It's much easier for us. Uh, but um, So they only report a beta coefficient, and then the fourth one is the F value, which you also found in uh, one of the articles. So we have four studies reporting different statistics. And we need to convert those into a common metric. And we talked about uh, the correlation already, right? We talked about correlation, but there are actually a lot of different effect size metrics, right? Correlation is only one that you typically use for uh, linear relationships. But you also have uh, Cohen's D, which is often used in psych, in psychology, right? And that's actually more an effect size metric that um, is, is more about, uh, is more commonly used with experiments and with means and standard deviations uh, that you use. So in service, in marketing, in management, you mainly see the correlation as the effect size metric. Why? Because everybody's familiar with it, right? Your first stats one-on-one -on -one course, you see the correlation coefficient, right? So everybody knows how, interp how to interpret it. It's easy, it goes from minus one to one, Right, Cohen's D. Who ever heard about a Cohen's D? Right, just a few people. Right, not everybody's familiar with that. So that's the reason why we focus on that uh, correlation coefficient. Everybody probably knows uh, these cutoffs as well. Right, if you have a correlation of 0.10, it's a small relationship, a weak relationship. 0.30 is a medium, and then 0.50 is a large. Uh, or strong relationship, 0.70 is a very strong relationship. So just to give you an idea about thinking in terms of effect sizes, right? We're not talking about is this significant or is this not significant? We're just looking at the effect size. How strong is the effect that we are observing? How strong is variable A related to variable B? Right, and it's a standardized metric from minus one to one. Right? And if we can convert all statistics into that metric, then we have the perfect solution because then we can start comparing the studies. And then we can start integrating all those studies. Right? So in order to do that, um, we need to find a way to convert it. And uh, the easiest thing is when the correlation coefficient is reported. Right? That's the easiest of all. If a correlation coefficient is reported, take that one right away. It becomes more problematic when it's not reported, right? Because then we need to do all sorts of magic tricks in order to turn statistics that we observe into the correlation. So for example, standardized beta coefficient, right? A regression result, a standardized coefficient or a coefficient in a, in a SEM model, right? 
there are some uh, simulation studies that actually show that adding uh, or uh, subtracting 0 0.05 comes close to the correlation. So if you observe a beta coefficient, if it's positive, you add 0 0.5. If it's negative, you subtract 0 0.5. And then that's a close approximation of the correlation coefficient. Right? It's not a perfect conversion, but it's an approximation. Um, in case of a t-test, right, if the researchers do their job, they report the t-value, they report the degrees of freedom. Right? T in between squares, the degrees of freedom. Right? If you take the t-value, you square it, and um, so in the uh, numerator and the denominator, you take the square of the t-value and you add the degrees of freedom, you take the square root. If you do that, you arrive at the correlation coefficient. And it's an exact conversion, right? So it's an exact conversion of uh, the correlation coefficient. With an f-value, right, people who had a little bit more advanced statistics know that uh, an f-value is simply the square of a t-value, right? So you do the same procedure Right, you put the f value um, in the numerator, in the denominator you add the degrees of freedom, and you take the square root. So basically, every statistic that we observe in a paper can be converted into a correlation coefficient. Right, and these are the most commonly used statistics, so you're only showing those. But if you have a, a chi-square test, Right, you can convert a chi-square into a correlation coefficient. Right, you can convert a p-value into a correlation coefficient. Right, and if you ever encounter that problem, right, just send an email because then, in that case, right, we can provide you with the exact formula. Right, because it's a little bit more complicated. Yes? Uh, you take that one because it's the closest approximation approximation of the strength of a relationship, right? So it's not a perfect conversion in terms of the beta coefficient. Now it's a standardized beta, not the unstandardized. So if you take the standardized beta and you simply put it in this formula, it's, according to simulation studies, it's the closest approximation possible. So it's, um, when we don't have another option, we take that one. Right, if we have the correlation coefficient reported in the paper, then we go for that one right away. But if we see that others only report a regression model, then that's our best available evidence, so we take that one. And we kind of discard the fact that there, there's shared variance and, and so on. So it's some, some give and take. Should we include it? Should we exclude it? It's a piece of information, so we should include it somehow. Right, and this is, this is one way to do it, All right? So basically, uh, when we apply these formula to the statistics that we observed, to those four studies that I listed just a few minutes ago, right, it's just uh, doing some basic mathematics, then we can convert every statistic, like the ones that you encountered in these articles, into a correlation coefficient. Right, and then we get like weak correlation for study one, a very weak for study three, very strong for study two, and a medium to strong for study four. Right, so we can get some insights into the strengths of the relationship. Right, we don't care, at this point in time, we don't care whether it's significant or not. We just want to know about the strength of the relationship. Is this clear? Because this is pretty um, crucial, right? The main message, every statistic that you encounter, but really every statistic can be converted into a correlation coefficient. 
In some cases, um, in, in the article of Walton and Hume, right, um, if you read that one, you encounter a situation where uh, the relationship between controllability and some outcome variables was not significant. What does that mean? And the authors simply say it's not significant. They don't provide test, test statistics. What do you do with that case? We're not interested in p-values. The authors simply say it's not significant at a p-value or an, at an alpha of 0.5, but it's not significant. What does it mean if something is not significant? There is no relationship. Right? So it means that basically the correlation is zero. Right? So you can, can include that kind of information as well, because the correlation is zero. It might deviate a little bit, right? But you take the best available information that you have. And that's what we also see is that authors are not really transparent in their reporting, right? So if you ever write a paper, be very transparent, right? And report everything. We will not hate you for it, right? So it's very important to, to think about those issues as well. Some journals explicitly ask for correlation matrices. Right, just to make our life a little bit easier. All right. So this is basically our input data. All right. Now we have a standardized metric per study showing the strength of the relationship between negative uh, controllability and negative emotions. Then we can start digging a bit.